On episode 325 of Nintendo Switchcraft, Marvel Ultimate Alliance has a date. Nintendo Switch has new firmware. Labo, do you love it? Do you hate it? Let's talk about Labo. Reggie tweets and more on this episode of Run... No, not Run Jump Stomp. Nintendo Switchcraft. I forgot what show I'm on. I'm going to shut up and let the music play now. everybody here we are that's the wrong button uh it is time for the latest episode of nintendo switchcraft uh we're brought to you live three days a week on tuesdays and thursday usually at 3 p.m u.s eastern and on saturday whenever i can get to it tune in live over at twitch.tv slash run jump stomp this episode of switchcraft is brought to you by jared h get switchcraft and my other content we've got other shows too ad free for as little as a dollar by joining the patreon over at patreon.com slash run jump stomp. Now that we've got all of the, the business out of the way, let's talk about Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Have you played Atari today? All right, we've got a release date for Marvel Ultimate Alliance. This was announced today by Nintendo. That release date is July 19th. Let's uh let's see what Nintendo has to say about it. It says on July 19th. The Marvel Ultimate Alliance series uh, returns for the first time in 10 years, and it is only available on Nintendo Switch system. In the Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, the Black Order game, you'll assemble your ultimate team of Marvel superheroes from a huge cast, including the Avengers, Guardians of the Galaxy, and X-Men, among many others. While iconic characters like Iron Man, Wolverine, Spider-Man, Hulk, and Captain America are back, new, newly announced heroes like Black Panther, Deadpool, Spider-Gwen, and Doctor Strange also join the action, each with individual abilities and special moves. Now, if you've never played a Marvel Ultimate Alliance game, then you are in for a treat. And if you have put as much time into the first two as I have, then you know that you've got something special to look forward to. These games are really, really fantastic. They're action RPGs that tend to have, like, tend to really shine when you've got co op, when you're sitting there and playing on the couch with somebody sitting next to you. Now, uh, you can play with up to four people in this, either locally or online. However, online will remember uh, or will require Nintendo Switch online. Uh, I'm sure, uh, but I am really, really looking forward to this game. It is probably, it's in the top five of games that I'm looking forward to for 2019, and we've got that date, uh, July 19th, so I'm very, very excited. The summer for Nintendo Switch is really, really stacked. There's a lot of stuff going on. Speaking of things going on... Hey, paisanos, it's the Super Mario Brothers Super Show! We've got brand new firmware for the Nintendo Switch. I I woke up at 4 o'clock this morning. Uh, I couldn't fall back asleep, and so I got up and I came into into um, into the Nerd Nest, my my little recording room where I play video games and stuff. And I, I sat down, I put on my headphones, I booted up the Switch, and I was like, I'm going to play something. And it was like, oh, you need to... Uh, I was going to play some Steam World Quest, which which I got early, and it's it, and I can't say anything about it. I'm just going to say I got it early and, and uh, looking forward to being able to talk about that soon. Uh, but I was going to sit down and play some SteamWorld Quest, and uh, the Nintendo Switch had an update, and I was like, oh, okay, probably more stability. I know that's what you're thinking. That's what I was thinking, more stability. But it's not just stability this time. Now, don't get excited. It didn't bring things like voice chat. It's not going to wash your dishes for you. Uh, you don't have cool themes and stuff like that, but it did bring a feature that is very, very exciting to me. And the reason it's so exciting to me is because I tend to get a bunch of games. I get a lot of games for free. Developers send me games, mostly indie developers, uh, for me to check out, put them on my YouTube channel, or talk about them on the podcast. And uh, I've got over 200 games on my Nintendo Switch, which is an insane amount. 
it was just the other day I was um I was trying to find a game. I can't remember which game it is off the top of my head. Uh but I was trying to find a game and up until now there was no sorting system for the Nintendo Switch. So you couldn't go into your huge list of games and say, "Oh, sort these alphabetically or whatever." Uh, and now now you can because I mean, sometimes you'll have a game where its icon doesn't even have the name of the game on it. And so you're sorting through, you're, you're looking through and you just can't find it, which is is uh, really, really frustrating when you want to play a game and you can't find it. it it's almost as bad as, as when you dump out all of the cartridges that you have and you start flipping over all the cartridges looking for that one cartridge of the game that you want to play. Um it's it's kind of the same level of frustration. Well, frustration be gone because now you can sort your games. You can sort them by I've forgotten now. You can sort them by by title, which is um, probably the best way to sort them. Um, I'm bringing up my 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 switch right now. All right, so you can sort them by title, or you can go by last time played, which is what was the default order before. Uh, total play time and by publisher. So if you know that it's a Nintendo game, then all the Nintendo games will be together. I don't anticipate a lot of people using the by publisher, um, but I, I, I like this. Now, uh, total time played. This is going to be a fun little experiment for everybody to do. Uh, so go ahead, grab your Switch, and sort your games by total time played. And... Uh, Take a screenshot, take a screenshot of this and tweet it at me at run, jump, stomp. Use the hashtag Nintendo Switchcraft. These are your top played games, the games that you've spent the most time on. For me uh, is Zelda Breath of the Wild is number one. Number two is Fortnite. Uh, number three is Super Smash Brothers. Four is Splatoon 2. Five is Diablo. And we're going to talk more about Diablo in just a little bit. Uh, six is Arms, then Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, then Xenoblade Chronicles 2, then Mario Odyssey, then Paladins, and then this surprised me. Paladins was before Pokemon uh, Let's Go Pikachu. Uh, that really surprised me. And um, let's look at my least played game. Scrolling all the way down to the bottom, it would be... Well, that's not really fair, because some of these are games that I just got that I haven't had a chance to sit down and play yet. Um, but my least played game is I Am Setsuna. Uh, that's my least played game on here. Uh, everything else I've put more time into, but those are my most played games. And I want to know what your most played games are. So, uh, sort, you know, update to firmware 8.0, uh, go to your big list of games, hit the R button, sort by total play time, take a screenshot, hashtag is Nintendo Switchcraft, and of course, you can mention me at Run Jump Stomp, and uh, you know we could talk about the most played games on uh, on the show in the future. That's not the only stuff that came. There was some other stuff as well. Um, there is a view for all available news option available within news, allowing you to view all, view all news items currently being distributed. Um, I don't know. I don't really use the news uh, part of the of the uh, switch very often. Uh, select from 15 new icons. I don't care. Uh, but if you do care, it's got Splatoon 2, Yoshi's Crafted World stuff in there. Um, now, this is very interesting. There's a feature, and I haven't had a chance to test this yet, but there's a feature to transfer your save data uh, is now available, allowing you to transfer your save data for individual games between your Nintendo Switch systems. You go to System Settings, Data Management, Transfer Your Save Data. Ah, okay, so I don't have to test this. Uh, it says here, Save Data will not remain on your Nintendo sor Source System after the transfer process completes. I, I don't really know what you would do this for. Because let's say that I had two Switches and... Oh, you know what? Yeah, I think I do understand what this is for. I believe, and I could be wrong, if you do this, I wonder if it sorts it by user. So if you only have one Nintendo Switch, and then you buy another Nintendo Switch, so now you've got two in the house, one for you and one for uh, your significant other or your children or whatever, 
um, then maybe you can transfer their saves off of your switch without transferring your saves. Uh, let me just check real quick. Go to system settings, data management. Let me find data management real quick. Data management and transfer your save data and send save data to another console. I'm going to, I'm going to hit that button and then yes, you select which user you're going to transfer from. So that is effectively a way that if you have had one switch all along and now you have, oh, you know what? I'm going to want to make sure that I get out of this. Uh, and then, and then after that, you have multiple switches, you know, maybe, maybe the kids are getting, um, switch, switch consoles for Easter, or they've got an upcoming birthday or something. Uh, and they've been playing on yours. You can transfer their profile to their switch without copying your entire everything over to their switch. I think that that's really, really good. And this is the kind of thing that I think is very important to do if you have a new version of the switch coming out, because what, what would probably happen in my family, if, if I didn't already have a switch for my son, well, actually my niece who lives with us, she doesn't have a switch. She's not really a gamer, but I don't know what the hell I would do. Like if I upgrade this, the switch to the next version of the switch, whatever, whatever that may be, if I upgrade this, what do I do with this? Well, probably trade it in, but how do you trade it in without buying it for like, I don't understand how that all works. Um, you know, because I would want to be able to transfer my stuff off of it onto the new system before trading it in. Maybe there's ways that that could happen, but let, let, let's forget about all that. Uh, let's say I was going to keep it and give it to my niece or my wife or my daughter, none of which those none of those people really play video games very much. It's mostly me and my son. Um, but if they did and I bought the new Nintendo Switch, whatever it's going to be, the Switch Pro, the Switch XL, the Switch Lite whatever it's going to be. And then I could transfer all of my stuff to my new system. But maybe my wife has been playing Puyo Puyo Tetris on here and she wants to be able to continue her save. Well, I just transferred everything off of this one. So all I need to do is transfer her save for that game over to the old switch. And now we're all set. This certainly doesn't mean that there's anything confirmed because Pakio in chat is saying, Bill, just confirm the next switch is coming. It doesn't mean that, even though I know Pakio is just uh, joking. Um, but there you go. Uh, a Zoom feature can be enabled from within system settings. This is probably for, um, you know, uh, an S S S accessibility options. So you turn it on and then you can zoom in on a, on a portion of the screen in order to see it better. I don't see why anybody would use this other than somebody who has difficulty seeing stuff and maybe they, they need to read something on the screen that's just kind of hard to see. And that's what that would be for. Um, let's see, an option to prevent the system from waking from sleep mode when the AC adapter is disconnected. What? Okay. So if you've got a switch, you dock it. You pick it up out of the dock, it turns on. Sometimes you don't want it to turn on. Sometimes... You just want to take it out of the dock, put it in, a, in your backpack and go, right? Well, it, it always turns on. So you take it out of the dock and then you got to make sure you push the button, look at the screen, make sure it turned off and then, and then put it in your backpack. Well, now there's an option in the system settings so that you can make it so that when you take it out of the dock, it doesn't automatically turn on. I think I am going to go through and, and, and turn that on. Um, uh, VR mode with 3D visuals uh, has a restriction within parental controls. That's awesome. That's great. And um, some other stuff that's not uh, super important. So that's Nintendo Switch, <clears throat> excuse me, 8.0, uh, which is very, very important. And I am, um, I I'm very excited about the, the just being able to sort. That's the most important feature to me is just being able to sort through that. All right. We got to talk about Labo. Now I know how you're spending the holidays That's watching right. Nintendo. That's right. We're watching Nintendo. Uh, if, if you're, if you're watching Nintendo, if you're looking at the, at the screen right now, and not just listening to the audio version, you see that I'm holding up the VR blaster. The VR blaster is this cardboard 
ridiculousness that my son and I, we spent, I think it was close to three hours. It was more than two hours, definitely. And I don't think it was over three hours, but it was close to three hours. Uh, we sent, we spent building this on Sunday night and holy cow, like I had never put together Labo before, but the people who come up with how to design this thing are clearly the smartest people on the planet. Um, it was insane how everything fit together and everything went together perfectly. I was so impressed with the experience of building it. I had a lot of fun building it. My son, uh, he kind of found the building it to be I, I almost like I, I know that he was enjoying putting it together, but at the same time, at the same time, he was like so, so much anticipation to being able to use it that he I, I feel like he couldn't really enjoy putting it together as much as he would have otherwise. Um, the the as as you're as you're putting it together and the instructions we put the instructions up on the screen and we we would take turns uh building a part so there were like five steps to building um building the blaster uh in, not including just building the vr headset itself because we did that on saturday night i think um or maybe it was friday night uh there were five steps to building the blaster and so I would do the first part and then he would do the second part and we would take turns handing the controller back and forth. So one of us would control, uh, you know, looking at the, at the, at, at what was on the screen and telling the other person what to do. Uh, and other person was in charge of creasing the cardboard and folding it all together. And, uh, we, we had a lot of fun making it. And I have to say that, okay, if you're, if you're, interested in labo vr it does not look great okay the screen is low res and i i don't know what the frame rate is i've never really been somebody who's been susceptible to frame rate issues if that makes sense like i tend not to notice them very much um so I tend to notice them when they change a lot back and forth, but but when something is 30 frames per second and something else is 60 frames per second, unless they're side by side, I really tend not to notice. Uh, so just keep that in mind. I So I, I couldn't really tell about the frames, but man, oh man, when you have uh, this screen that close to your face, can you see some pixels? You can definitely see some pixels. There's some big old pixels on that because the Nintendo Switch is a 720p screen and having it a couple inches from your face um, with these little magnifying lenses over over it makes the pixels look huge. So overall, the, the games don't look very good, but they played really well. Um, I, I'm not going to get into what all the games are. The games are you shoot at stuff. That's it. Uh, the, just the regular VR mode before you build the blaster had its own, uh, games. Like there was a, there was a, uh, like a air hockey game where you were a person on the air hockey board and there was a ball going back and forth. I don't know why they called it hockey. Cause it was really, there was no puck. It was a ball. Um, although I guess field hockey uses a ball So whatever bill, uh, there was a ball going back and forth and you had to kick it so that it would hit the. Uh, the opposite wall, I had a lot of trouble with that. Like I couldn't figure out what to do, but as soon as I got the blaster, then I was like, oh, okay, this makes sense. And the way that they have figured out how to, now, uh, cause if you're just listening to the show, listen to this. So I just, I just cocked the gun. All right. You pull back on the thing and it uses rubber bands to hold this thing in place. And then there's a, there's a trigger for your thumb. And when you pull the trigger, it shoots and it's all made out of cardboard. There's like six pieces of plastic in this whole thing. And basically the pieces of plastic are just these little plastic grommets that hold the pieces together. And there's only like six of them. Um, 
this thing is amazing. It's really, really cool. My son and I, I can't see, I'm talking away from the microphone. Sorry, just let me set this down. My son and I had a blast making it. And, you know, the whole time he was like, so, Dad, when are we getting that backpack? And I was like, I don't know, man. That's a lot of stuff to have in the house. I don't know if I want to have all that stuff in the house. Um, but but he really enjoyed it. And if you've got a kid, uh, you know, from seven to probably, you know, older than seven, because that's what Nintendo recommends is that you're older than seven in order to play this. Um if you got a kid who's who's that age or older, it's a really, really fun experience to just sit down with them and build this thing. I am really, really impressed. So I made a tweet and I asked, I said, for those of you with Labo VR, what do you think of it? Reply with your reasons. I'll read your responses on the show uh, at Run Jump Stomp, just so you know. And uh, 73% of people who responded said that they were impressed with it. And... Uh, 27% said, meh, you know, uh, that tweet is in the show notes and there's eight hours left. So you can go and vote and, and have your voice heard. Uh, and, uh, so let me read you some of the responses. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Richard Mortlock said massively impressed with it. My wife had zero interest in VR at the time. I have had the PS VR and all it took was the Labo hippo game. And she was hooked and wanted to keep playing it. How Nintendo support it going forward will be very interesting, but it is a full VR experience. It is, but it's not what I think a lot of people want from VR. I think a lot of people want uh, very, very realistic stuff from VR, and this is not it. Uh, also, I, I was completely blown away. I had no idea. I thought, and I feel kind of dumb for thinking this, I thought that the Nintendo Switch got all of its, um, what's the word I'm looking for? All of its um, gyroscopic data from the from having the controllers attached. Does that make sense? But there's a gyroscope in the Nintendo Switch itself, okay? Oh, look, you can see myself in the reflection, all right? There is a gyroscope in the Nintendo Switch itself. So even without controllers attached, it knows which way you're looking when you're playing. So the idea of you playing Zelda Breath of the Wild completely in 3D with the Nintendo Switch VR thing is something that I think is completely possible Outside of the fact that Nintendo made this thing without a strap to hold it up to your head. So you have to play it with your hands up. But I've seen a lot of people who have posted pictures of them putting a strap on the Nintendo Switch Labo VR thing so that they can put it on their head and playing it that way. I think that it is probably possible. And when Zelda gets its update in... On the 25th, I think, off the top of my head, uh, when it gets its update on the 25th so that you can you can play the game that way, it would be very interesting to find out if the game cares if you have the Joy-Cons attached or not. Because if the Joy-Cons don't have to be attached, then you can play with it just attached to your head. And I don't... I... People tend to be thinking about Zelda VR, but I don't think that's really what we're getting. We're getting Zelda 3D, all right? They're separating the image into a stereo image, and now you've got it in 3D. We'll, of course, see how well it works because 720p screen, 30 frames per second, you split that in half, now you're doubling the rendering on everything. Is it going to be a high enough frame rate to keep people from getting sick? I don't know. Uh, only time will tell. My wife did say... Cause she, cause she tried out the gun game for a little bit when you shoot aliens and stuff. And after one match, she was like, Oh, I don't feel so good. And, you know, maybe it was the food that we ate. Maybe it was the uh, low frame rate of, uh, of the switch. There's, there's only one way to, or, well, there's no real way uh, to know except for, I guess for her to try it again. And she, she's not really interested in it, even though she did say it was really impressive. 
Um, game code said it's no Vive, but it's a full-fledged experience with really incredible sense of scale, responsiveness, and immersion. I could see it being used in many more Nintendo properties effectively. And I agree. It, it, I really agree if it had a strap that it could be used in so many games. Uh, your own little 3D TV. Uh, it, was, it was just pretty, it's really cool. Does this mean that Bill is going to go out and, and buy a bunch of Labo stuff? Probably not, because I still don't want all this cardboard stuff in here. Uh, like when my son went to bed, I was like, where do I put this so that the cats don't chew on it um, or try and sleep on it? Because for some reason, they love cardboard. What is it with cats? Uh, Ian uh, posted, uh, first experienced it with Labo and also with VR. The analogical component, the toy cons, is a really great experience that make you get really involved in the action. And with the price, which is really cheap for the basic pack, it's a really awesome deal. And that's something else to keep in mind as well. This is absolutely the cheapest way to try VR outside of, I think, Google Cardboard. Actually, let me check and see how much that costs right now. Google Cardboard price. Uh, Google Cardboard, I'm clicking on it right now. Um, get Google Cardboard. Let's find out how much that costs. It costs $15. So it is not the cheapest. Google Cardboard is the cheapest way to get, uh, to get VR, but I think that this is a better experience and it's a lot of fun building it. Uh, so anyway, that poll is still up. You guys can still vote. There's eight hours left on that. Uh, so get over there, let people know what you think. Um, speaking of tweets, Reggie fils he has retired. We've already kind of talked about his impact on Nintendo back when his retirement was announced. Uh, but yesterday was his last day and he just tweeted. He tweeted from his own account at Reggie. Nice. Must be nice to get at Reggie. Uh, but he's got at Reggie and it's verified. He said, hi, Twitter community. And it was the, the little, um, oh God, I can't, how do I describe it? You remember the, the Nintendo Direct where Reggie was like a puppet and he shot lasers out of his eyes? Oh no, that was a different thing. It was like, uh, it was like there was an MTV show like a claymation MTV show where celebrities wrestled and I can't remember or, or fought to the, the, to the death. And it was a Reggie that was made in the same vein. And I guess he still has the action figure, the little plastic action figure. Yeah. The chat is telling me celebrity death match. Thank you. Um, oh yeah. Okay. Yes. It looks more like robot chicken. See, I'm, I'm too old to watch that stuff. I don't have cable, so uh, I don't watch, uh, robot chicken, but I have seen, and in fact, I think robot chicken made those things for Nintendo. Um, but he's got this little robot chicken looking action figure holding up his at Reggie sign. And he said, hello, Twitter community. So go give Reggie a follow because he's awesome. And, uh, and, uh, we're, we're all better off for, for having him in the world. I like Reggie. I like him a lot. Give him a follow and, uh, tweet at him, tell him to come on my show. And, and talk about Nintendo. It'll never happen. It'll never happen. Uh, last thing before we get to the feedback, Diablo 3 is on sale for $39.95, down from $60. Listen, you heard me list my, my most played games. My most played games included Diablo 3 in the top... Let me look again. I'm going to go to my all software by total play time in my top five, Right? And Diablo 3 came out in November of last year. Now, I've had the Switch for two years. And Diablo 3 is already number five on my most played games. Diablo 3 is fantastic. It is on sale for $40 right now. That's $20 off. I don't know what you are waiting for. Go buy it because it's great. Now, if you don't like ARPGs, then obviously avoid it. But Diablo 3 is a fantastic game. And if you haven't played it yet... You're missing out big time. When you've lost your last man, hold A and B to continue where you left off. Do this before the title screen appears. All right. If you want to give feedback, it's super easy to do. 
at run jump stomp use the hashtag nintendo switchcraft it makes it easy for me to sort by which show you're talking to uh because i have other other video game shows uh but joe parsison parsison sorry joe i've screwed up your name joe parsison uh sent me a tweet uh they said i was thinking about persona 5 switch releasing joker will still be on a nintendo console in persona q2 on the th in persona q2 on the 3ds notice that nobody really talks about that game as it's not released yet okay so i'm trying to parse exactly what they mean and i could be wrong uh, but most people say well, it's really strange that Joker is coming to Super Smash Brothers Ultimate with the fact that he he's not been on a Nintendo platform. And I what I think Joe Parsison is saying is that Persona Q2 is coming to the 3DS. Let me just Google that real quick. I should have done this before the show, but sometimes uh sometimes I'm done. Uh Persona Q2 is coming to the 3DS. Oh, it, it, it came to the 3DS last November, and I'm not sure, but it seems like what Joe is saying is that Joker is in that game, and if that's the case, then Joker already exists on a Nintendo platform, and maybe that is why it's okay for Joker to be in Smash Ultimate, even though he's not, uh, well, even though he's not on the Switch. Look. I, you got you made a good point, Joe, but I don't think it's necessary for Nintendo to say only characters that are on the Nintendo on a Nintendo system can be in Smash. Because guess what? As soon as they're in Smash, they're on a Nintendo system. You see how that works? Uh, and Joe's not the only person that makes this uh, mistake, and I made that mistake in the past too. I don't think that it is a requirement for a character to be added to Smash that they be on a Nintendo system either prior or after. But at the end of the day, I think it's perfectly acceptable for Nintendo to say, oh, you want to put Master Chief on there? Let's go. That's fine. Because that sells software. I, I don't think... For the most part, I don't think that Smash Brothers leads to sales of other games with the exception of Fire Emblem because here in the West, Fire Emblem was never very popular until their characters were in Smash and then people were like, who the hell is Ike? And then they'd look it up and they'd see this Fire Emblem game and they'd be like, well, okay, I'll give that a shot. But when you're talking about like, I'm just going to use Master Chief as an example. Let's say that that Microsoft and Nintendo uh, do their little high five and Master Chief comes to the Nintendo Switch through Super Smash Brothers. I don't think that there's going to be a lot of people who look at that and say, oh, I wonder who this Master Chief fella is. Everybody knows who Master Chief is. He's the guy from Halo. So I think that it's okay if Nintendo ships a character for Super Smash Brothers Ultimate that is not on a Nintendo system. Do I think that's what's happening with Joker? No. I think that Nintendo Switch is getting a copy of Persona 5 at some point. But I don't think that that's the only way that Joker gets on the Switch. Uh, or I'm sorry, the only way that Joker gets on Smash. Um, I just, I, I think that... I don't know. I think that it makes sense for Nintendo to just say, oh, you want to bring your character to our game? Sure, let's do that because it'll sell more games. And uh, at the end of the day, that's that's the business that Nintendo uh, is in. Oh, look at this. I, I already have somebody replying. Hopple uh, replied to me. He, he took a screenshot of his most played games on his Nintendo Switch. Here we go. We've got uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild. Uh, Horizon Chase Turbo, Moonlighter, Octopath Traveler, Mario Kart 8, and Steam World Dig are their top six games on Nintendo Switch. Uh, and I, clearly, they are uh, from Europe because the Zelda, the Zelda picture, good, I'm not covering it up, 
uh, the Zelda Breath of the Wild art it looks very, very different than what I've seen on mine. So must be. Oh, yeah. And it's uh, in German or something up there. It says Langaste Gemsplecht. I don't know how to say it. Sorry if I've upset you by ruining your beautiful language. It's not my fault. Well, OK, I guess, I guess it is my fault. Um, all right. I think that that's it for the show for today. Um, if you guys want to get your thoughts on the show, use that Twitter hashtag Nintendo Switchcraft. I'm Run Jump Stomp. If you want to become a part of the community, uh, runjumpstomp.com slash discord. You can also watch the show live over at twitch.tv slash runjumpstomp. You can get a hold of me by emailing me runjumpstomp at gmail.com or you can reach out to me on Twitter like I said before. If you're looking for ways to support the show, stop by runjumpstomp.com slash thank you. If you want to check out more shows like this, runjumpstomp.com slash shows. Thank you to Noteblock for the awesome music on today's episode. I will see you all next time. Until then, I hope you all... Uh, oh, make sure that you guys let me know what are your most played games on uh, your Nintendo Switch. Uh, hashtag Nintendo Switchcraft. Bye, everybody. See ya.